Yo, what's up? It's your boy Chico Venom and in the building. Yo, go cop my new singles on the air. Good time featuring Red Man. And yo, keep your ears opening for the Dope Dealer Podcast. Peace. Let's go. I got the tightest flow, huh? You wanna bite this flow, huh? You thought I'd write this, no, nah. I got a flow with no fly. I go and knock out your job. Just by spitting my bars. I ain't got time for your bars. Y'all just sit, I'm a star. So y'all can say, see, cause I might be. Little diamond in the rough, that's likely. Is that why some of y'all wanna fight me? Just ask me politely, but I'm turning you down. I got you burned by my sound. <laughs> this is my time, it's not your time. So stop turning around You can't give me no nah Oh, dude, I'm a star When I pull up in my car I got you saying, oh yeah You can't give me no nah 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 I'm an irritant World's most dangerous podcast Dope Dealers Podcast It's your man Jamal Doman Toby Hicks What's up, man? Episode 31 we here, we here. What's up, oh, Toby yeah. Hicks? Man, chilling, man. How you doing? Oh, man, you know, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm man, a- I am feeling great, too. I just want to give a shout out to everybody in the Pacific Northwest, all yeah. the venues. Uh, it was a hell of a run. Uh, shout out to the Mill Casino, everybody that came out there in Coos Bay, Oregon. Uh, shout out to everybody that was at Chadwick Pub in Medford, Oregon. The Tacoma Comedy Club in Tacoma. Seven Cedars Casino in Sequim, Washington. Mm. The Muckleshoot Casino in Auburn, Washington. Mm. Man, it was a it was a great run. Shout out to everybody that came out. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having me. You was all over the place. Yeah, man. <laughs> in that <laughs> was, car. Hey, man, that's what's up, man. Hey, man. Right. Is, is tra- hey, man. Have jokes will travel. That's what it is. Yeah, man, and. Uh, Oh, why we remember, man, it's getting close to the holidays. Don't forget about me and Jamal, man. Yeah. Book us for the holidays. Yes. Coming up, your corporate parties. Yes. You, you need I mean, some shit. funny comedians. We the guys to, to yeah. call. Clean comedy, dirty comedy. Yeah. Tell you, tell your boss, say, hey, man, fuck that bullshit we normally do on the uh, holidays where we just sit around and we exchange $10 gifts and that shit. Tell them to hire a comedian. If you the boss, you hire the comedian. Y'all got a budget for it. Every job got a budget for the holiday. Think of Toby Hicks and Jamal Doman, the Dope Dealers podcast, when you're thinking of your holiday needs. Definitely. You can find us on Instagram at the Dope Dealer Podcast. Instagram page, Dope Dealer Podcast. Just type in Dope Dealer Podcast. And and we got a number they can call, too, if they want to book us, too, right? 818. 916-1818. 916-1818. One more time. 818-916-1818. Shout out to uh, the homie Bachelor. That was him again, man. You know, he, he he's putting in work. That was no no, no nah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so he, Bachelor be putting in work. That's the song that opened up the show. And Bachelor's one of our regulars, man. He's always coming down here, man, supporting us and, and, and uh, always giving us Sending music. music. Yeah. yeah, we appreciate that. Bachelor, you gotta we gotta get him on the show one day. We got one day we gotta bring him down on the show, man, because he always blessing us with music, man. We gotta have him come up here and maybe rap some songs or something like that, man. So we're gonna put that together. Bachelor or Aaron said, Smith. Rap some songs. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spit some you sound yeah. square as fuck. Come on and <laughs> rap some songs. Hey, um, so yeah, man, <laughs> listen, man, we, let's bring in a, a we call him like the he's the official third member of the Dope Dealer Podcast, man. Uh uh, you know, he's our uh, expert sports correspondent, I guess you can say that. Yeah, sports guru. Yeah, he's our sports guru, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I always mess his last name. I'm going to see if I can get it right this time. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Eberlein. Yeah, hey, he got, got it. it. got it. <laughs> God damn. Oh, What's up, well, Joey? Hey, guys. It feels this good, to be, feels good to be out and out, man. Oh, God, things are great. Jamal, Toby, I mean... Glad to see you two are doing well too. Yeah, man. Dope Dealer Podcast growing. What you been day. up to, Toby? I mean, I'm, uh, Toby, what you been up to, Joey? Man, you always got just stuff going. Grinding, on. man, just grinding. I mean, uh, just found out I'm likely going to be performing uh, on my birthday in West Hollywood at the State Social House mm. over on Sunset Boulevard. So, what's the date? October seventeenth. It's a Wednesday. Ah, okay. Uh, same birthday as, uh, let me see, Evil Knievel. That's close to mine. Mine's is uh, October 11th. No shit. My fellow yeah. Libra. Yeah. My man. Okay. And, you know, I knew I, I liked you based on your comedy when I first saw you perform in Irvine five years ago. 
Mm, wow. But yeah. now knowing you're a Libra, okay, it all makes sense now. It all it makes all sense. Makes Joey sense. got a perfect memory. Joey don't smoke that much weed. Yeah, his <laughs> yes. memory is just, he be like ripping and off I shit. I just remember I those. remember back in eighth grade, I wore a blue shirt to set to, uh, Psychiatric class, uh, whatever. <laughs> tell you the truth, that is probably the type. Of, I'll tell you what I can tell you. I remember what I wore on my birthday in eighth grade because we wore uniforms. Oh. So I can tell you what I wore. <laughs> That's funny. You you got a hell of a memory. A good memory, man. Good memory. I know not to. Well, I know not to. Uh, you can't, do it. Yeah, you can't lie to you him. Can't lie around him. You could have been a police. Too, hey, every once in a t- I, I went. I actually was going down that path. Uh, got my AA in criminal justice at Fullerton Community College. Mm, uh, but that was when I first learned I had acting chops too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they used to uh, do the police academy on campus there, and for extra credit, I would attend as a role player. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't go into the police field. And you know what? I pray for all my buddies in that field uh, because it's a very tough time to be a police officer. But let's just say a lot of them, as accomplished as they were and as well as they've done financially and moving up in the ranks of law enforcement, they even told me, they go, don't do it. You'll just find yourself hating people. Yeah, sure. You know, them hating you. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, but uh, oh, you know what though? But uh, but hey, things are good though. You know, show business uh, right now. Uh, you know, I can't say what, but you know, doing some extra work tomorrow on a TV show where I'm going to be playing a ranch hand. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, the director, or the first AD, hears this southern accent and says, "Okay, we're giving him a speaking part right here." Yeah, I would have mm-hmm. to say so because I, I mean. I would literally be shocked. I want to. I would like to go just to see because I cannot believe that there will be anyone with a better Southern accent than you, unless that motherfucker just got here from Mississippi. Now, where are you? Where are you from originally? Born in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Oh, are you, well, how you get a Southern accent? I have no idea. <laughs> Lived in Cherry Hill till age from, five. I didn't know you was from Cherry Hill. Long Island, New York, till age ten. See, now my parents raised me to be New York Giants, Yankees, and Knicks fans, all New York sports teams, but. Taught me to respect the Philly market, which I do. Uh, as long as it's not the Cowboys when mm-hmm. it's all said and done. Yeah. Or the Red Sox in baseball. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, then I've been in uh, Southern California when I moved to Orange County in 96. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's all the different voices I've tried to impersonate, all the rap songs that sang for karaoke that have mm-hmm. just created some sort of twang. I don't, I don't know. That's fine. Oh, that's great. That's crazy, man. So how? So you, you're such a a, you're a sports guru fanatic. How did how did this? Did you grow up like? How did this? How you become so obsessed and know a lot about sports? That's to be honest. I I don't know if this is true, but I won't question my dad on this. He said I was inspired by the movie The Mighty Ducks to get into sports. Mm. Yet I didn't didn't play hockey. How does that add up? I don't know. I can remember lines from Mighty Ducks and Mighty Ducks 2 like it's nobody's business, so I'll take my dad's word on that. Wow, mm. that is crazy. I don't know, but you know what? I always I don't know. I just love I just love the game. Uh first baseball game I ever went to was at Shea Stadium when I was eight years old. Mm. Uh and I can tell you the uh the leadoff batter for the Montreal Expos, who was their opponent that day, was Mark Grudzelonic. Damn. Yeah, my man, first auto got my first man, autograph that you day. Remember that? Andy. I just do. Uh, my That's first crazy. got my first autograph that day. A uh, uh, former longtime ace pitcher, uh, journeyman in uh, Major League Baseball, Brett Saberhagen. Mm-hmm. That was my him. first. Yeah, that was my first autograph at batting practice. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, as for football, I always enjoyed watching the game. Uh, was never good enough to play it, and now knowing what I know with CTE and all these big hits these dudes are taking, I'm glad I don't have the yeah. athletic ability to play the game. <laughs> it's, it makes it it's a yeah. good little cop out when you don't have mm-hmm. enough talent. <laughs> well, yeah, listen, yeah, likely well, we, excuse. We're happy, yeah, we're happy we got you here, man. We're gonna kind of do we're gonna do NBA storylines today. All this right. is not the actual NBA. Uh, season preview show that'll come in in a, in a little while, but today I think you know we're getting ready. The NBA is, is getting closer, so I, I think we should look look at storylines for the upcoming season because it's a it's a real tantalizing season. I'm excited already, you know, as a Sixer fan. Who you rep? I know you rep the Giants. Who you rep for the NBA? New York Knicks. Knicks. New York Knicks. Oh, I New didn't York know. Okay, Knicks, uh, right. but I'm I feel, more I feel of sorry a... for you, man. Sorry about that. And... No, we we're gonna talk about the Knicks too. Yeah, but if there's one thing I will say though, I'm an 
I'm a player. I'm, I like certain players too. I was always a big Allen Iverson fan growing up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Starks because he played for the Knicks is my all-time favorite player. I like that he could shoot the three. Mm-hmm. He shot him right out the playoffs. But I'd probably have to say right now my favorite player in the league is Damian Lillard. Oh, I like that. Because for the short time I played basketball, I was a guard. Mm-hmm. But I, just the thing I like about Damian Lillard, he's a team guy. I feel like he's very underrated and very underappreciated. At yeah, that. he might have to get out of Portland. He's just always got he's got the same look on his face from tip off to the end. You just don't know if he was having a bad game or a good game. <clears throat> I like that about him. He's got a cool on the court demeanor. It used to be Russell Westbrook. Uh I love his mentality and the way he plays. The guy brings it every night. We mm-hmm. all know that. But clearly, game four of that first series against the Jazz, he really showed he was about himself. Mm. Than yeah, he'll never, he win a, he'll never win a championship. Uh, makes me somewhat understand. Never know what, he will yeah. never be. I mean, well, not maybe later a, on not in his the, career. Yeah, not with his current, what they got over there. He, now, won't, he won't never win a championship as long as he's the best player on the team. Yeah. That's what I'm well, trying to say. Yeah, I can see that. That's true. Yeah, yeah he won't he's, win one. He's a number two on a good team. He's a number two. No, I mean, I mean what I'm saying, he's going to be older in his career, and he's going to be willing to accept that. I mean, shit, Carmelo Anthony can't accept it. How you think Russell Westbrook gonna accept it? Well, but let's, let's get into the NBA storylines. Speaking let's of get Knicks. Let's <laughs> get into the NBA storylines. Of course, the number one storyline that starts off the whole year is LeBron. Welcome to <laughs> LA. Oh, Laker Nation. The best player in the world goes to the most iconic NBA team. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is that gonna be? It's, it's gonna be. A tremendous thing. October 16th, it starts. Uh, I mean, every game is going to be legendary. The ticket prices are just skyrocketing. I mean, mm-hmm. all the celebrities that's going to mm-hmm. come. This shit is going to be the biggest shit since Showtime. Since since Shaq and Kobe, was, was since they run three in a row. This will be the biggest thing since then. And this might eclipse it. Especially by the time next year comes and they get that second max player. Depending on who it be. Who will that it be? That shit will eclipse... Uh, I believe the Shaq and Kobe here, not with wins necessarily, but just in mm-hmm. expectations and just the mm-hmm. following and just the Lakers about to be worldwide again. I mean, not that well, they the Lakers always been, yeah. but I'm saying it's mm-hmm. about to go to a whole nother mm-hmm. level mm-hmm. again. How many wins for them this year? How many wins? I give them 52. You give them 52? I was going to say 54. So yeah, I give them about 52 win. I think not. Nah, it's uh it's going to be something special. And you know what? Look, keep in mind, Kyle Kuzma and Brandon Ingram, those guys are still pups. And I, I believe they're going to play a lot better than people think right now. I mean, I think the youngsters are. I mean, and, and quiet is kept. I really think uh, – I think Alonzo Ball is gonna have a, a breakout year this year. Mm. It'll he's be hearing all the talk, you know. He's hearing all this shit, you know. And he got, you know, got Rondo on his coattails, you know. Which Rondo's a veteran and uh, you know knows how to play the game better than most point guards. And uh, but so I think Ball's gonna learn from him. And I think Rondo's gonna, you know, I know Rondo gonna be trying to play, but I think this is, I think Ball will shine in this in this move. And this is the kind of fire that he needs uh, to be lit under him. And you know, there's also some talk about maybe Lavar needs to tone it down a little bit as well. I haven't it, heard a lot. I haven't heard a lot about him. See, and you know what? And you. That's uh, what I was going to yeah, get to I, next. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he'll, he he ain't going to fuck with LeBron as much. Agreed. That's Agreed. that's where the respect comes I, in. The respect comes in for LeBron, and let's face it, LeBron's got enough pull already where he could go to Magic and say, this man won't shut up. Get the kid out of here, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, then, hey, shout and they out, would listen. And they would listen. Shout out to Magic Johnson and Rob Palinka, man, for getting rid of Lou Aldang's contract. Yeah, that, that was that that's huge man, right that there. Man, that is, man, in, less than, in about less than two seasons, they have gotten rid of all the bullshit that they were faced with when they came on to the job. And now it's just basically on them to have their vision and whatever. Now, if anything fucks up, it's on them because they got rid of all the bullshit and they have done it in remarkably quick fashion. Mm-hmm. I'm astonished at how they got rid of uh But you know what? I knew Lou Aldang, he wanted to play this year. So it was it appeased him, you know. Uh, to take the pay cut because you know they, he he did it for seven million dollars less, but you know he'll go to another team and at least get three or four of that back. Yeah, yeah, because he can. Yeah, he can still help help a team out. I mean, yeah, yeah. I just always thought it was fucked up. They just relegated him to the bench. But he, yeah, you know. but hey, hey, but look, man, check this out. What if somebody said Jamal, we are gonna pay you eighteen million dollars a year and you ain't even got to perform. You ain't got to yeah, do no shows. I, I, yeah, but you know I'm getting. I'm gonna sit my ass down for the year. 
I still want to play. I mean, I'm still going to get my 18, but, uh, you know, it's a yeah, you competitive. Want, yeah, you want to. Yeah, you exactly. want to. Yeah, you want to thing. play. But. 18 million to not play it ain't like you know shit and if he and if he has been wise with his money that he has made you know throughout he has. his career he african he ain't you know, fucked off no money then it's then it's shit, definitely he african then it's definitely a case where you can say look you know what i'm willing to take the pay cut you know what i'm gonna put my pride to the side i'm gonna take less money you know i much, just want to play the game shit you know how much two of them million would do back in his hometown mm. he rebuilt the whole I mean, it's Village. a separate story. I mean, because my my first roommate in L.A., let's just say, will be my last mm -hmm. uh, because I uh, live by myself now. I've lived mm -hmm. by myself for three years because this guy was such a disaster of a roommate. Mm -hmm. He's Nigerian. Mm. Believe me, I know how I know how these Africans get with their money. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's frugal. If this is going to it's going to sound weird coming from a white guy. But look, people, I saw firsthand. I know how these guys get when it comes to their money. That's mm. hilarious. Yeah, so Luau Dang is, I mean, he, yeah. he ain't spending no money, man. And so the, Showtime is back in LA. Yeah, oh, it's back. It's, it's back, back on LA. a it's back on a bigger level. And you expect the uh, playoff seed where they're gonna where you think they fall at? Because the West is still tough. I give them I give them a fourth to fifth seed. Fourth, I'm fifth. giving them top four. Okay. I'm giving them top yeah, four. Yeah, I think they're gonna be in the top four. All right. Number two storyline Golden State Warriors, three P. It's it's barring a catastrophic injury from multiple players it it's a wrap agreed i hate to i hate it to would say not it just again. one of them it would take multiple warriors to go down for them not to win it again and is this their last hurrah is it because i know clay thompson I, is up after next season this could be no it's not i think clay's gonna Marcus stay. is not gonna re-sign with them after the season right yeah he's just doing this as a, like an audition you know just to uh you know just to kind of you know get his stock back up for the mm -hmm. full you know for the full max deal uh but i will rehab the injury and get a ring and say peace out hey but the owners the owners of the golden state warriors said if they keep winning then they will keep spending Mm. They're moving into a new arena, so they're going to try to still keep everybody together. But I think, I mean, I look at it like this is that after this next season, if they say they win again, and then that, uh, that'll give uh, Clay Thompson uh, four rings. Four, yeah. Four rings, I mean, as a you secondary think, player, yeah. it's time for him. Third, he, third player. Yeah, yeah, yeah third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically. Yeah. The third man, it's time for him to come on back home to L.A. where he'll be the second man, but he will be the man to take over and be the main man. Uh, you know, with he, he basically, he will become the number one as LeBron ages out. So, you know, it's like he can come on home and uh, and uh, they're going to, Lakers got the bread. So I believe that's, I mean, to me, if I had a choice being a Laker fan, if I could pick my ideal Laker to be teamed up with LeBron, I would take Clay Thompson over Kawhi Leonard. Oh, you would, yeah. I would too. Yeah. He's because a shooter, he, yeah. because he he can shoot and he yeah. can shoot without dribbling. Mm -hmm. The one thing too with Kawhi, and I he gotta defends admit, just as well. I gotta say, just the all these recent events with Kawhi, you know, a guy who yeah. is a very few words, you know, wanted out of San Antonio for whatever reason is mind boggling to me. You know, now this well, whole no, thing about how he right. might how well, he no, might sit is. out in Toronto. We're gonna we're gonna get to that. That's one of the storylines. Okay, good, good, good. So I'm not gonna I'll just leave it right okay. there then. The one well, thing I, I will say I don't trust his uncle either, man. At I, least with Clay Thompson, we know he come from a solid background shit. Michael Thompson, his dad, former Laker. So yeah, I I want Clay Thompson. If I had a choice, I mean, obviously I would rather I would like to have Kevin Durant, but realistically, age wise and everything, Clay Thompson would be twenty seven at the end of this year. And uh, that'd be the perfect person to bring Because a lot in. of people With forget Durant has been, he was drafted number two overall in 2007. Mm -hmm. He's already been in 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. He's getting, in terms of basketball terms, he's getting old. Yeah. And let's yeah. keep in mind, we all know this guy is an assassin from beyond the arc. You know, he can pull up from 35 to 40 feet along with uh, his counterpart, Steph, right there. Mm -hmm. Or his uh, uh, teammate, Steph, excuse me. The guy has lanky, skinny legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will catch up to him sooner than yeah. it will a guy like LeBron because the guy is a physical specimen from top to bottom. Yeah, that's why yeah. LeBron has been so good for so long at this point. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to believe LeBron. What was that? Two thousand three when he was in that draft class with yeah. Bosh and Wade. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, God. And uh, then there's that other guy from the Knicks or the 
time Nuggets, but former Nick Carmelo Anthony yeah. too was in that class. Houston Rocket now. So he gonna shoot them right out the playoffs. But it's, <laughs> you know who, hey Toby, you know who just uh, joined uh, my live video was the bouncer at the Daily Dose. Remember, uh, or he just, you know, he just uh, started watching. Remember the big Samoan guy? Oh, yeah, Ryan? I do remember. Hey, how you doing, Ryan? Yeah, hey, miss you, Ryan. Happy belated birthday, brother. Yeah, he just, I don't know what number, but he just had his birthday yesterday. Mm. And his cousin, you know, tearing it up for the Arizona Cardinals right now, okay. still enjoying a lengthy NFL career. Mm. But uh, back to basketball. The one thing I'm going to say about the Warriors, you know, you made the points about Clay Thompson. A few guys were making comments about it. The th- and rumor has it he's willing to take a pay cut to stay long term in the uh, with the Golden State Warriors. Because yeah. let's face it, the more the Golden State Warriors keep winning, the more money they're going to make. So if your ownership, yeah, and he already got the big money shoot deal in uh, China. If you're, you know, and if you're, uh, if you're an ownership, you're willing to, uh, you know, spend that money as long as you know you're going to keep winning. And you mentioned the big shoot deal and the so, endorsements. But you, but you think he just wants to sit there his whole career and be? A, I mean. To be honest, uh, history is not going to be, it's not even going, they're not even, Clay Thompson, unfortunately, Clay Thompson might be a Hall of Famer and he still won't be looked at with a lot of respect. He's going to be James Worthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's he, going to be James he Worthy. He's going to be looked at, yeah, exactly. He's yeah. going to be mm-hmm. looked at, you know, he, and so to come back home to the Lakers and revive, if he came back to the Lakers and won a championship, then he yeah. would be he would be a made man forever. I'm here. What they saying about Durant coming yeah, to the Lakers? Yeah, yeah, man. What did y'all think about? Is that just smoke screen or? It's definitely a possibility because we know how tight LeBron James and he have been for mm-hmm. a long time now. Uh, you, what's the saying? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Durant, to me, Durant has to leave Golden State at some point. I mean, he got <laughs> he his thinks- rings. But like Clyde Frazier, Hall of Famer, just said, hey, you got to put an asterisk next to his name. Yeah, Clyde was. Clyde so, was I mean, but out. you know, a lot of people believe that, that, yeah. OK, we know you got it, but, you know, you the way you did it. If he goes somewhere else and does it there, then people will. I think that will legitimize oh, his. Uh, validated more. Yeah. If he goes Especially to the, if he do the it Wizards. The, if he, if he, yeah, we, go to oh, Washington go Wizards. To, yeah, yeah, if he go home or come to the yeah. Lakers. Yeah, because if he could pull one out in Washington, shit, there's nothing he could do that would be more admirable than that. Because they ain't won since West Unsell. Mm. They, gosh, man, that's bringing it back in the nation's capital right there. I <laughs> yeah, mean, I grew man. up on the Wizards before they were the Wizards. It was the Bullets. Bullets, yeah. Rod Strickland, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Juwan Howard, and Chris Weber shooting yeah. each other. All but, right. Um, so, so let's go. Let's. And last thing I'll go to say, you got some. On, you know what? But just the, the th- main thing I was going to say. You know, Clay Thompson. You know, his endorsements are going to be predicated on the success of the teams he's on, right there too. So when it comes to the finance financial part of it, if he takes an on the court pay cut for a winning team, he, he's going to make that money back and then some with the off the court. But if he come to L.A., he's going to make even more. He's going to make even more. He's going to. Uh, be uh, introduced right into the show Lakers business game as well. Lakers got thirty-eight million dollars in cap space available as of today. Uh, what about Jimmy Butler though? Fuck, oh, man, I don't no, want man. nobody who played for Thibodeau. He didn't ran their ass man, in the ground. You Butler. have a point, right? I don't there. want nobody who's played with Tib. Cool guy uh, though. Yeah, really, great player. Really, really I, I, cool I respect his too. game. He would be a candidate. But I don't want nobody who played with Tibbs. Or Kai, well, Shit, let's that, face we it. just got rid of Luel, Luel Dang who played with Tibbs. What the fuck we going to bring in somebody else for? I, f- I keep forgetting it was Tibbs. All right, so yeah. th- number three storyline, the return of the Celtics stars. Yeah, I don't know how they ain't going to have enough balls. Basketballs, man. Pauls. I think uh, that that is the favorite in the Eastern Conference right now. Uh, the Toronto Raptors, we will get to in a second, definitely should not be overlooked. Uh, on paper, but the Boston Celtics with a healthy Kyrie, I believe, would have beaten the Cavaliers in the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I believe so, too. And if you get him and Gordon Hayward back, Mm -hmm. then forget about it. Uh, you know, friends of mine, you know, who were uh, Utah, Jazz come off fan, the Utah Jazz fans. Who going to come off the bench? And that's something you always have to question is, it's I don't know like, how they you know, going to work this out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's. Well, because who? I don't know. God, why am I drawing a blank? Who was the guy uh, who really started? Who kind of he took? Jason, uh, Jason, you got Tatum. Jason, not Tatum. Tatum not Jalen Tatum. Brown. Jalen Brown. Is it, was Jalen Brown the one wearing the Drew Bledsoe jersey? Going no, it's Rozier. No, it's Rozier. T- okay, Rozier. He's a point guard. He shit. He could start on a bunch of teams too. But you, you know, but when you get comfortable in that starting spot right there, and you think you've earned it, and you're just told to go back to the bench. 
every pro athlete has that. Yeah, they ego. probably gonna have they to all end have up that. trading him. There's gonna be something there because that's gonna. But that's you know what, Kyrie? Cause some tension Kyrie only got room. one more year. Yeah, Kyrie he, may be leaving. So they can't year. trade him. They and you know I didn't. I totally forgot about that because that's somebody who, of course, my Knicks have their eye on is Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I can see him doing that. But it's the type of thing where you do the Celtics say, "All right, I know we gave up what we." Ha- uh, gave up to get him, but is it worth keeping him around if we ain't going to resign him? On top yeah. of it all, if they believe Rozier is the guy. Oh, uh, Rozier ready. And I mean, he ain't, Ky- they he still ain't got Kyrie, picks. but he's ready to start on, on a lot of teams. And they still got a lot of picks. I think they got Memphis picks next year. Mm-hmm. They have if, if Sacramento pick is not number one, then they get it next year. So... Danny Ainge got a lot of, you know, got a lot of thinking. Uh, I think he's going to have to they, trade they, somebody. They re-signed they, Marcus Smart. Yeah, they needed to do that. I mean, they needed that to do guy, that. guy, you know what you is need? The East, he's just a winner. He's the there's the win or there's a the lose? They, yes. They're yeah. the favorites in the East? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. the favorites. You know, Marcus Smart, to me, he's one of those guys. He ain't as physical as, you know, the guys back in the day like Oakley and Mason, uh, the, Dave, the Davis either. boys. He ain't as big, but I just mean, though, you know, he's a guy, he'll get up in an opponent's face. Yeah. When J.R. Smith put that cheap shot on Al Horford in the Eastern Conference Finals, who was the first guy to get up in J.R.'s face? It was Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. You've got to have those yeah, junkyard dogs. he got a lot dogs. of brothers and sisters. He used to that bullshit. He fighting at the house. He brings intangibles. He's he's someone he has. There are things about his game. He may not be the best player, but there are things about him that just cannot be taught. He was gonna knock that uh, old white man out in Oklahoma State. So you think that the only thing about the <laughs> Celtics, right. the only downside of the Celtics may not have enough balls to go around for all these. Well, all these you know stars. what? We really gonna see how good a coach Brad Stevens is now. I mean, he's shown that he's an excellent coach, yeah. but to manage this right here, how, if he makes this work and they can, uh, they get to the NBA Finals and he manages time to keep these people happy uh, during this process, then yeah, he he's really a tremendous coach. Okay, the number four storyline: Kawhi returns. In Toronto. I know we was getting into that earlier. So, and, and you know, it's just the common, you know, the fact that, like you said, it's his uncle who's doing all the talking on his behalf right But at there. some point, he, this is like LeVar Ball, that situation. He got to stand up for himself, though, too. You got it. You got to Look, I... It'd be nice. It's nice to have someone you know that's willing to stand up, and, you know, and back you up and whatnot. Yeah, that's but all he not, got. He raised them, you know. You like gotta, dad. You gotta be. You gotta be there for yourself, though. You, you're a man. Yeah, you can't you're let him. He didn't. Unc didn't talk to him about the Jordan uh, resigning with Jordan Brand. So that's one scenario. Then got him out of Sacra, uh, San Antonio. Who is his uncle? Like, who? What? What is his background? Like, what? well, his uncle been in his life the whole time because his father got murdered when he was a kid. Okay. Right. So his uncle been basically raised him. Hmm. So now his uncle was quiet. Now he's just coming to the forefront. Like, you know, hey, I'm managing shit. But uh, some of these decisions, you know. Uncles, he's thinking, you know, he's just, he's not thinking these things through, you know. He's, a real, I mean, the fact that his uncle, what he should do is make sure his, his nephew gets the best representation right. possible. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't try to just all of a sudden become the representation. And I mean, man, I mean, because damn, if I was his uncle, mm-hmm. Toby Hicks, Uncle Toby would have said, look, Kawhi, here's what we're going to do. You're going to sign that motherfucking contract for $200 million, Then we're going to ask to get the fuck up out of there. We ain't going to leave without the money. But well, why would you? But then why do they need to trade you then? They don't need to trade you. you hey, he could afford. he could have forced to trade then. He could have got the bread and forced to trade. The same way the Clippers traded Blake Griffin after giving him a max deal. Could have been done. It could have been done as well. Uncle right. could have started tripping in. They could have the same shit they did this summer, they could have did it next summer. It's uh and but and, and had the two hundred million locked down. In fairness to Kawhi though, I still wonder what on earth was going on behind the scenes, in particular, you know, from the San Antonio side of things, you know, from the trainer room to Greg Popovich, you know, with the comments that they made. You know, Tony Parker even directed some comments at uh uh, Kawhi himself, and that, and of course, a well documented story just Bruce a few Vaughan. weeks ago after after we had Clipper Daryl here in the studio. 
Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Bruce Bowen, you know, he makes those comments about Kawhi Leonard, and the Clippers fired him. Right. right. Yeah, because right. they're trying to get they're, they're trying, trying to, to get, get Kawhi. Yeah. I get it. They're trying to get him, man. Way to make it obvious, though. Damn. But you know what, though? On the real, though, a lot of people were saying that was fucked up. They fired Bruce Bowen, trying to get Kawhi, whatever. But let me tell you some real shit that I seen. Bruce Bowen was fucking horrible on TV. Did you yeah. ever watch? He I was never. fucking horrible. I'm not bullshitting you. He was horrible. Not so. I didn't pay he no attention horrible. to him. I thought he was horrible. He was boring as fuck. Maybe there were just some guys who were just so damn good. Yeah, he's horrible. Interesting. Okay. Just like, you know, I'll tell you another horrible uh, NBA uh, broadcaster. I love him. I loved him in the NBA. But Reggie Miller is horrible. He's horrible announcing the game. You know he's what? He's so he, fucking boring. He, uh, I don't know. You know what? I yeah, think I like, maybe because I, like I had so much respect for him as a player, no, especially I respect that, breaking but this the Knicks hearts. No, this is a whole other thing. He, you know, he's, he's got a, he's got the distinct voice. The guy clearly knows the game, but he ain't as good as uh, Mark Jackson and uh, Jeff Van Gundy. And then he be trying to make little like uh, comments, you know, that are like up to date with slang, and his slang is all <laughs> fucked up. It's like, why even try that shit, Reggie? <laughs> All right, so let's keep it on. Okay, so uh, so Celtics are there. We was talking about Kawhi. Uh, he plays in Toronto this year. We all agree he plays. Will yeah. he play in Toronto next season? He has to. He has to play there this year. If he if him is, okay. if his uncle pulls some shit like that, if they do that, will he play next year for Toronto? The following no. season? No. 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 no, they hired his friend from uh, the coach from San so Antonio. So the next was- team. <laughs> but it's something, you know, but it's something. Uh, hats off to the Spurs for being able to get a player in return like DeMar DeRozan. Yeah. Right wasn't. there, because DeRozan still has some game. Oh, yeah. He ain't he ain't Kawhi, gonna fit in, yeah. but he still has some game. He's going to fit in. Right there. So hats off to them get over for his feelings. That. Since they weren't going to give him to uh, trade him to the Lakers, they get wasn't going to do that. You know, but you want to talk about a point guard, you know, kind of with that attitude, you know, just with that demeanor, like who just doesn't really seem to care about anybody else, uh, you know, just on the court, that is. Kyle Lowry. Yeah, yeah, that's right. a that's a bad dude. Well, that's no right to the playoffs. That's, that's, that's a no bad playoffs. He's bad to the playoffs. Yeah, th- and then he's right. bad there too. Yeah, he meets Horrible. LeBron. He meets he meets LeBron. LeBron does that to a lot of people. Okay, number five storyline: PG returns to Westbrook. Okay, see. That was one of the dumbest moves ever. Speaking as a Laker fan, come on, man, ladies and gentlemen, fucking Toby is is biased. He's a Laker fan. That's a stupid ass move. How the fuck? I've been to Oklahoma City. Ain't shit there. How the fuck you stay there? About he playing in. You ain't going to never that win also, with Westbrook. That also might be, well, not the Westbrook reason, but like you said, there's nothing going on. Look, the guy, he's got a home, he's got plenty of time in the offs. He's got plenty of time on the road to party. Maybe one thing he likes about OKC is maybe because there's nothing to do there, a lot of people won't bother him. You never know, nah. but, you know, he's, he mentioned, you know, there was some appeared Somebody, to be yeah, a yeah. heartfelt uh, signing, you know, in terms of returning to Why OKC. would he want the Lakers? Why would he have wanted the Lakers to trade a bunch of players for him so he come here and ain't nobody here but him? When he said he was coming, that motherfucker didn't even come. He didn't even talk to Magic. How do you just, who tells Magic Johnson, you know what, fuck it, I, ain't, I don't even want to talk about that shit. He just want, he uh, apparently, you know, uh, was disappointed that they didn't trade for him was simply what it was. And I mean, wasn't there, but didn't the NBA also kind of nix that too with the Lakers? Wasn't there some sort of tampering violation? Well, they, they, well, they would just, they just find them a couple of times about comments that were made. When That's that, what it was. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know, but you know what, uh, Westbrook and he, I'm sure that there is some sort of bond right there. And you know, for all I know, maybe they just wanted to get Carmelo out of there. Oh, they definitely wanted to do that. Well, that was a smart move. That was I did, when I say they, I mean PG thirteen and Russell. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I mean, and I guess he didn't want to meet with Magic because he knew he couldn't tell him no. Nah, but damn, you know how do you how do you turn down a meeting and not even listen to Magic Johnson? And listen to the motherfuckers in Oklahoma. Get the fuck out of here. Where's Golden? Oh, St- where's Oklahoma City at? In the where are they seeding at in the West? Where you think? Six. Six. Yeah, I would have to say around six, my mm-hmm. damn self. Because uh, I mean, I've they got, got a solid team, but it's like, how how's Westbrook gonna play with a uh, of what they got from Atlanta, the Hawks, breathing down his? I mean, Westbrook, they could probably gonna run them both. The point guard, Schroeder, oh, Schroeder. they gonna Schroeder. run them both. Yeah, at the they same. can run them. Yeah, but Schroeder's the back. He's a backup point guard. No, he's a starter. He's a yeah, backup point guard. 
No, so you mean to tell me you don't think he can start on any team? I mean, he can start on a lot of teams. He can but start on a lot of them, but he ain't, him, he ain't Russell you Westbrook. Him come, yeah, you rather him come off. He ain't off. Russell Westbrook, but I believe, uh, Jamal, you Russell were going to say running him at the yeah. same time. Because Russell Westbrook, look, the guy's a shoot-first point guard. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, they're going to run him. You can yeah, put him, you can run him at the same time. Yeah, but time. I mean, uh, Schroeder, is not, he's not a backup. He's, he's a starter in the NBA. He's only like 22 he's years a, old. He's he can a start, starter in the yeah, NBA. Yeah, he can start, but I mean, is he... If that's your point guard, I mean, you can't win a championship. He ain't if John just, Wall. Yeah. He ain't Damian he's not elite. Lillard. He's not elite. He ain't there. And he ain't no Jet. He he's still young. There. There's no saying he won't get there, but he ain't not I don't know. OKC okay, so signed uh, Nolan no- Noel. They signed oh, him. He ain't going to do shit. He'll be back up. He, he gives him some length and stuff like that. All right. Uh, the number six storyline, the Rockets, Houston Rockets. Who, who I think they close to uh, yeah, making the finals. Yeah, resign. Uh, Chris Paul gave him a bunch of money. That didn't. That's gonna make, kill him. in the last yeah. three seasons gonna oh, kill him. Oh man, yeah, he gonna be forty, making forty. I don't know, and you know what? I, I love Chris Paul. Fourth overall pick in 05 out of Wake Forest, mm-hmm. behind Andrew Bogut, Marvin Williams, and Darren Williams. Oh wow! I nice. love me some Chris Paul, but you want to talk about someone who? Should have taken less money for the betterment of the team. Yeah. Because Trevor Ariza, he gone. Yeah. That length right there, that's what kept them in seven games against Golden mm-hmm. State. If they don't miss 28 straight three pointers, they're in the finals. Yeah. If Chris Paul's healthy, might I add, mm-hmm. he, they're in the finals with that too. But with not being able to, you know, afford those guys. Uh, Trevor you know, Reza, these other important Luke, pieces what was the right Luke, there. Luke, 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 they miss it. Uh, yeah. Richard Dum, Luke that Richard Umbamute. That, that was their defense right there. That was there. another one right there. I mean, you know, my, my former college classmate was brought on board, though, James Ennis the third. We were yeah. we were classmates at Long Beach State along with uh, Casper And they got Ware, rid of too. that horrific Ryan Anderson contract. That's a hell of a that move. Was, yeah, was, and I don't know how they got somebody to take that money. Well, and they've got Clint Capella for, what, a five-year, $90 million mm-hmm. deal now? Yeah, we all thought, in. no, he's locked in. And here's the thing, by the NBA standards now and the way the salary cap structured, he, he got, got underpaid. He got yeah. gypped. So the Rockets, you know what? All in all, good offseason. It's going to be interesting to see the whole Carmelo Anthony story, though. Yeah, what is he going to do? I mean, he he's got to come off the bench, right? He can't start. And I heard he he's, he's they said he has no problem coming off the bench. That's what I'm hearing. Eh, I mean, maybe he's just saying the well, right yeah, things. Yeah. But and and see, the thing is, is that uh, he didn't say that in OKC because the initial shock of oh, hold on, this is the first time anybody told me I need to come off the bench. Uh, I don't think he's going to come off the bench in Houston. I think it's going to be Chris Paul, James Harden. Uh, Carmelo, uh, PJ. Now nah, PJ Tucker is probably going to be the small forward. So as he can, I guess uh, Carmelo going to play the four. And, he messy, and Capella going to play the, the five. He think he can play the four. They picked up Marquise Chris out of Phoenix, the young guy. He's still developing. Uh, they yeah, just need still... they need some toughness. Who's going to? They got Michael Carter Williams. Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> um, uh, they Gerald Green. I like Gerald. I like that pickup. He's going to give I him like some Gerald toughness. Green. Joe Green, I think, is going to take the Trevor Reza role. Joe uh, Green, man, he's a funny man. I remember, I never will forget one time um, when Joe Green was a rookie. My uh, my daughter's my uh, my daughter's mom, uh, Josh Howard, was a, is a relative. I remember, yeah. So when uh, Joe Green first came in the league, his rookie season, he played for the Dallas Mavericks with Josh. Okay. So I never will forget one time we was a. Uh, at at the at the hotel chilling whatever, everybody doing their thing. We drinking, having a good time, and uh, somebody said, "Hey Gerald, what time is it?" And he looked at his watch and he said, "Man, I don't know. This motherfucker don't work." <laughs> and everybody was looking like, "What the fuck? You in the NBA? You make you you know you sign you you a millionaire now? Your watch don't work." And Gerald said. The bitches don't know it don't work. <laughs> this one, it was diamonds all over this watch. That's selling. Like and, 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 but he was a young kid. Yeah, he was he's, dead he's, serious, yeah, he's bro. He's to the core. He was dead serious. He's like, the bitches don't know it don't yeah, work. Yeah, he was. I never forget that story. He's Houston to the core, man. That dude. Yeah, he was only like 19 at yeah, the time. He, he came was dead in, yeah, because he came in. He was a high school guy. Well, man. I still remember when he won the slam dunk contest when he had the cupcake. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the shit. Right there. That you know, blew, the blew out the candle and then bam. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad he's back in the league, though, because Gerald deserved to be in the league. So where, where are we looking at Houston in the West? Where are we looking at him? Two. Two? Two after Golden State. Yeah, I got to go with him. Uh, I got to go with him, too. They won the, yeah, they won the West last year. But uh, all right, so uh, next storyline, and this will be the final storyline. Then we can get to like who we think are MVPs and talk about some of the rookies. Uh, Mike Sixers, the young Sixers. They didn't do nothing to help themselves. As of now, you don't think so? Well, they I think they think that helping bring them back and be another year progressing. JJ Reddick, bring him back. Yeah, uh, ben Simmons, another year progressing. And the key is Markel Folks actually developing, you know, you know and improving what's the on word his on him? Game. Well, they, he's working with uh, Drew Hanlon, the, the shooting, and they saying they saying they feeling good about him. Somebody they said he got this, he's 6'6 six, six now. They said he even grew. Damn. Yeah, that's what they, that's what they saying. They saying he's six six now. He grew. And you know what? And just from seeing him around at the NBA summer league last year when I went uh, for work, you know, good kid, too. Really yeah, good, good, yeah, good, good kid. kid. Yeah, hopefully it he's works definitely out. Someone, I ain't never seen nobody do no shit like. He's he definitely did. someone you know with his head because his head is in the right place. He is mm-hmm. going to work at getting better. He's not one of yeah, those they, who's just yeah. going to collect a paycheck and say, "All right, cool, I'm sick." Because that was one of the most bizarre yeah, one things of most, yeah, one I've ever bizarre. seen in all my years of definitely watching one of basketball bizarre, and playing yeah. basketball. I've never seen that shit happen. Yeah, definitely a the bizarre. I mean, I've seen story. people be injured and then like. You know, like knee wise, and be nervous to jump and nervous to do certain things. But I never seen nobody uh, just just lose bizarre out story. Yeah. And we still don't know what actually. But you know what? He's he, he's twenty. He's he's a year older. I think he and he's the key. I mean, I hate to put so much pressure on a twenty year old, but I mean, he's got to be that third score. He's got to be that guy who, who you know we know what Simmons and also Simmons getting a jump shot which I hear he's developing um, that's just a scary thought yeah, that I guy mean, with a jump shot yeah you know, so he's got to be that third he got to be that third dude man he's got to be that and it's not you know it's a perfect situation because you know it's not like he's going somewhere where you got to be the man no you can you know Embiid and Simmons going to do their thing JJ going to do his thing uh, um, and you know Dario people be sleeping on Dario um yeah, it's just young team taking the next step. Can they take that next step? What do you expect from Embiid this year? Oh, I expect Embiid to put up MVP numbers. He's yeah, definitely he, he said he's definitely, wanted, he wants to, his name in the MVP conversation. He's definitely a guy who has that mentality this is, too. Yeah. Who you know he doesn't want anybody else. He made it clear. You know we don't need anybody. We don't need LeBron to come to Philly yeah, and definitely. whatnot. No, he's, I, don't, he's a, I he's didn't a, agree with that. But I nah, hear yeah, he was tripping every on team that can shit. can use a LeBron. But if he's a guy though, you know with that pit bull mentality right mm-hmm. there, like look. I'll put the team on my shoulders and let's do this. We're good with Small what we have. have barely been healthy that's a guy, this season yet, though. That's he a guy though who's got a. a uh, but that's a guy though who's got his head in the right place, you know, with the drive to win an MVP. But that's the same way I thought for a minute. Now I realize how stupid that was. I mean, at first I was thinking like, you know, only because of the fact that I felt like, I was like LeBron ain't never been hurt. It'll be just our luck. He'll come to the Lakers, and this where he'll get hurt. And break down. Oh, well, it. I didn't. I didn't look at LeBron because I'm thinking that was if my I only reason PG, why I didn't want Because I thought Paul George was coming. I was like, well, y'all don't really. If he, Paul George come, you know, you don't really need LeBron. But you know, he didn't come, so they, I guess you did need LeBron. But still, on the Sixers, um, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, it's a it's a real it's a crucial season, um, and folks is the key. I, I like Dario. I think Dario going to take another stop. I just want to see what Simmons develop with a jumper. If he can just 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 shoot it, take the shot. Even if you don't make it, just take the shot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you he know? at least should be able to develop a mid range game. A lot of people say he's shooting with the wrong hand. A lot of people say that uh, that he's actually shooting with the wrong hand. I'm not. Re- you know, I know a lot of people hate Robert Covington. I'm. You know, he made first team All Defense, but a lot of Sixer fans just hate him. Um, but he's That's back. Philly fans for you. I was. They I didn't was, pay him now. Ain't nobody yeah. taking that contract. I was mad about the Mikael Bridges situation. I'm still don't know. Hopefully this kid they and traded then, uh, for. He got hurt, right? Who? Uh, the yeah, the kid. Yeah, then he got hurt, but he's not. He he'll, he'll be back. He ain't out the whole year. I'm still mad um, at. Uh, will he be ready for the start of the season? I don't know if he's gonna be ready for the start of the season. Yeah, it yeah, ain't yeah. that. Uh, yeah, but I I'm mean, still mad at the it's not a whole wear situation. Hey, because you know what? What what was crazy <laughs> about that is like what really fucked me up about that draft is that. They could have told his mama what they could. Yeah. They could have told her, "Look, you know, this is what we doing." They should have had them people all shocked like that yeah. and all happy. And that lady been working there for twenty yeah. years, and you put her through that emotional roller coaster. 
and embarrass her like that in front of the whole damn world. Yeah. Philly, uh, the, oh, yeah. They, they, it's going to be some... He Karma better turn out because Bridges, I love Bridges, man, but he 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 we're gonna see what he turns out. Bridges is about man. to be a starter in Phoenix. Uh, I'll say one thing when he you know that he's gonna have games against Philly circled on his calendar yeah. every damn season. Well shit, it's his hometown. You know, yeah, he, yeah exactly. But that was some bullshit. Yeah, how they, I, yeah, I how they did they could have they did that did that better. So uh in the east, where you think the sit where you look at the Sixers at? In the East? Two seed. Two C. Oh, so you got. I'm him. gonna. I'm. I got him going ahead of Over Toronto. Toronto. I, I would have to Toronto. put him in front of Toronto too because we just don't know what how Kawhi is gonna be if he's gonna play at all. Which I think. I think he will play. There's no way I, because he will really tarnish his brand if he sits out. If he gets over there, because Toronto didn't have shit to do with the mismanagement of your health issues like it was in San Antonio. So now they put the good foot first and they paying your salary. If he go there and don't play, then uh then you know, he's going to really tarnish his brand. If he goes there and don't play, I definitely hope the Lakers don't go after him. Who the fuck want him here? So uh and with that being said, health-wise also uh we don't know, you know, we don't know who uh I, I would have to go with I would have to go with uh, Philly. Okay, so t- uh, number two, number yeah, two seed. Okay. Toronto mm-hmm. number three. Okay, all right. So uh, let's let's talk about the rookie class and uh, uh, just spotlight some rookies that you think you're excited to see and you think going to make some noise this year. Um, I started off. I started off. Um, I I go to your Knicks. I love Kevin Knox. I love his offensive game. I I just I just. Uh, I do too. Yeah, I'm just I'm really excited to see what what he's going to do. What his uh, he he's he's so he just he's so offensively gifted. It's like it's it's, it's a shame. He and you know what the thing is like that's that is a bright spot that the Knicks finally do have to look forward to. Uh seems like they hit it well uh you know by taking him uh at number 9 I believe right after Colin Sexton went to uh the Cavaliers from Bama. Mm-hmm. Uh but I really like the I really like his game. He's got some length and he's a guy, he's a pup. He's going to develop uh from, you know, a a physicality standpoint mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. I really I nah, I I'm excited uh for that one. Uh hopefully, you know, build a good core around him and uh the unicorn Porzingis for the future. Mm. If he's healthy. If he's healthy, of course. Uh number r- rookie uh I got I got to go with uh the two big men. Marvin Bagley and DeAndre Aiden. Yeah, so you, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, they're they going to get the opportunities. They're going to be playing for a horrible team, so they're going to get the opportunities to really shine. And I think, uh, especially like Bagley playing uh, alongside of, uh, it's the kid from uh, Kentucky. Uh, Willie Colley Stein? Yeah, yeah, them playing Willie alongside of him. Open up a lot of doors uh, for Marvin Bagley. And uh, DeAndre Aiden going to be a beast, man. He really is. Uh, and I mean, mine. Would I would have to say the one that in particular I'm excited for would be Trey Young, mm, yeah. point guard from Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Look, he's definitely probably was the most intriguing player of this draft class. You know, very similar to Steph Curry in regards to his uh, outside jump shot game. Mm-hmm. You know, we see he showcased at Oklahoma quite a bit that this guy's got 35 to 40 foot range as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the big knock uh, on Steph Curry going into the NBA. Though there were some experts who said right off the bat, no, this guy might be the second best player in the draft after Blake Griffin, or some even said he was the best player in the draft, Mm -hmm. but they just said he wasn't developed enough. You know, was he going to be able to put on enough size if he's Mm -hmm. going to try to go to the hole? Mm -hmm. Will he be able to withstand the contact and the physicality aspect Mm -hmm. of it? But if you've got that good of an outside game, if Trey Young becomes that guy, you don't need to worry about going to the hole. Yeah. They gave up a lot to get him. Yeah, they did, and which I didn't understand. But I, you know, it is what it is. But uh, but Atlanta, they needed. I, I think I they believe they're a, moving into a new they arena. Star power. They needed somebody to the fans. Star they power. They know that the kid that they gave up to Dallas, uh, basically that Dallas pick. Uh, Don he Chich. might be. Yeah, he might be a better player. But they, he wasn't gonna draw no yeah. fans down there. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm I'm interested in seeing. They got they got to keep Trey out the, them strip clubs. Yeah. He a little dude too. Them big ass booties in his face and big titties and big pussies. He just he gonna be out of control down there in Atlanta. I'm interested in seeing Luca. Uh, obviously, Luca. Luca. Uh, see what he does. Um, uh, <clears throat> my man, uh, who, who, Michael Porter Jr. I want to. Hopefully, he gets oh, healthy. Yeah. And, Want to yeah. see what he does for the Nuggets? Uh, Mo, Mo, Mo Bamba, 
Uh, it's a, that's a good. I'm excited about a lot of these oh, rookies. Yeah, and and I, got these a, kids, I got man. another sleeper uh, coming up. Yeah, who yeah. was that? Who? No, I'm just saying when he, with the surprise teams. Like, oh, okay, you know, that, okay. That's, that's, that's on there. When Colin Sexton. Colin uh, Sexton. Yeah. That's the one yeah. who I'm really intrigued by. I was real man. I was so intrigued by the idea of him playing with LeBron. I really wanted no, LeBron you, to stay in league. No. But you knew I that really, well, no. You should have known that wasn't going to happen. Mm, nah. Hey, there was. It was believed that LeBron, you know, really down to the final minute, had the Cavaliers in his thoughts. You know that they were still. Uh, you yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. there was still a chance of mm-hmm. going back. But, God, I really wanted that to happen. <laughs> Colin Sexton really wanted it, too. Now he led that freezing freezing Cleveland by itself. So, yeah, it's interesting. Um, now so he's just, got J.R. Smith. Let's just, do a, uh, let's just do a quick rookie of the year. Just what you think, who your rookie of the year? Uh, I would have to say it's going to be uh, DeAndre Ayton. Okay. I'm going to say DeAndre Ayton as well, too, because the uh, – I'll get to that in a few. He has all yeah, opportunity. Um – uh, did, 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 He's did, the physically most ready. He'll oh. have it. He has a good mentor in Tyson Chandler there as well, too. I'm gonna go with Kevin Knox as rookie of the year. Man, I would love that. <laughs> I'll go Kevin Knox. Okay, MVP. MVP. Hey, this is, it, this is an easy one. This oh, is yeah. LeBron. It's, it's time to give it back. He could have been MVP every year. Every man. year, yeah. He ain't won it in about seven seasons. They yeah. got to go back to LeBron. LeBron will win the MVP. Write that shit down right now. Dope Dealer Podcast, episode 31. LeBron will win the MVP. As much as I want to disagree with Toby, he's right. No, he's... Because he, this is going to be his team. Mm-hmm. They're not going to say, oh, well, he has too many star players. No, he is going to put up the numbers. He's going to make the uh, the young kids around him take their game up to the next level. Nah, th- that's LeBron's award to lose right now. Yeah, this is his. Okay. All right. You know what? I'm going to go three for three. I'm going to go with LeBron, too. You guys convinced me. Yeah. Because ultimately, I want Damian Lillard to win it. <laughs> yeah. Because that's my favorite player. But well, LeBron's going to win it. Shit. LeBron's going to win it. Surprise teams. Surprise teams. I got one. My surprise team. Uh, we want to do one out of uh, the East, one out of West. But the surprise, oh, yeah, we can do the surprise team of the league, if they come back healthy, uh, my surprise team will be the Memphis Grizzlies. If they can get see, yeah. Marcus Gasol healthy and uh, Conley, and you drafted Javon Jackson Jr., and you got Javon Carter, that defensive monster out of West Virginia, uh, I, I'm going to roll with the Memphis Grizzlies. Could shock a few people. I can see that. I can see that. I'm going to roll with the Detroit Pistons. Oh. That front line of Andre Drummond and Blake Griffin. And why am I drawing a blank on their head coach that they just hired from Toronto? Yeah, Dwayne Casey. Dwayne Casey. Casey. Hey, Paul. Paul. Yeah, yeah. Damn, he woke up from the dead over there. <laughs> Dwayne you. Casey. Thank you uh, to our producer, Paul Antonio. But nah, with Dwayne Casey there to monitor that front line. Blake Griffin getting acclimated to the system. Andre Drummond is an absolute monster. I'm going with... You mean getting the, acclimated to the weather? Shit. Mm-hmm. I'm the going... The going to be different. I mean, now, Blake, we all know he's got some off-the-court problems, all the m- child support he's got to pay to his uh, yeah, they baby's cut it down, mama. Though. They cut mm-hmm. it down. Right, but uh, no, but I think... Uh, and maybe Aretha's funeral will be over by the time the season's <laughs> I don't know. I'm telling you, I'm thinking... <laughs> Dope dealer podcast. Yeah, I'm thinking, nah, shit. but I'm thinking the Pistons over my surprise team in the mm-hmm. east uh i mean and did you do one west too uh no i just did the one west you can do an east the, and west if you want to i'm, just gonna, east, I'm gonna go with indiana pacers are they not are they really a surprise team they they were surprise team last year yeah they they got victor oladipo man what a surprise yeah. star he turned into that was fun to yeah, watch most imp- yeah most improved player but you have a you had an east and the west or i mean you know what in the in the West, I mean, I don't know if this would necessarily be a surprise, but a team that missed the playoffs last season mm-hmm. by a little bit, Dim. as as Clipper Daryl would call him, Glenn Rivers is taking the Clippers to the playoffs this season. Whoa, that would be. I, I don't. I listen. I said I don't How think the Clippers gonna are going to be with who. I don't think the Clippers are going to be that bad. Ooh. With who? I'm telling you, I think there's just going to be a fire with the Clippers this off. This, yeah, uh, this fire season. sale. I think gonna there's going to be a fire sale. with those boys. I'm telling you, there's going to be something there. They and, got players. They got Avery Bradley, Patrick Beverly. They they got they Danalo. They still got him. I like the uh, the rookie out of he won't Kentucky. Make it through a season. 
they got I'm players. Telling, they Tobias got, Harris. I mean, Montrez Harrell. They picked up Luke M- M- Mbamubatu. Luke Richard M- Luke yeah. Richard M- yeah, he back. He was always, But I really like uh, Lou Williams, uh, six man of the year yeah, last year, Williams, deservedly yeah. so. But in particular, mm. though, Montrez Harrell. I really like the energy that that guy brings yeah. to the team. Too. He ain't got enough to get him to the playoffs. He ain't got that much motherfucking energy. Hey, don't sleep on them. And don't I, st- don't sleep yeah. on Gallo too. Hey, he if, comes hey, back if the Clippers if the Clippers go to the playoffs, then that means the Lakers ain't going. Hey, ain't no motherfucker. I got two surprise they, teams. They both went no six. Yeah, oh six. Yep. But I'm saying, look at all the competition that already in the West. If the Clippers beat somebody out, who the fuck they gonna beat out? I got two surprise teams. I'm my West surprise team is the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns. I mean, have, they, I know you're saying, well, they ain't got nowhere else to go but up. But they're gonna they're gonna go up. I uh, could see that. Trevor Reza. They got some veterans in there. Signing Trevor Reza, he gives them that junkyard dog mentality. Mikael Bridges. Mm-hmm. Um, Josh word, Jackson. Word, word on the street is is that if Phoenix doesn't do well by the trade deadline, they might trade Ariza back to Houston. I can see That's that. Word I can on see the that. street. They buy that. him out and let him go back. I can see that, but uh, they have you know, Aiton. You know, like I said, it's gonna be you know, y'all know Aiton's gonna do what he think. Devin Booker finally got somebody else to, you know, to, to carry the load with him. And I, I like what that's my team out of the West. That's my surprise team. My surprise team out of the East gonna surprise y'all. The Cleveland Cavaliers. Cleveland Cavaliers. I know they yeah. lost the best Come on, player. Man. Come Listen, on, man. Who I know they, they lost the best. Oy, 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 they just lost one. They lost the best player. I know that, but it's, you know. So you saying Listen, Kevin Love? They're going to surprise some people. A lot of people expecting them. This is not Cle- Cleveland when LeBron left the first time. They ain't got nobody. That Colin Sexton kid is a beast, and he. Oh, so you see, you think they might make the playoffs? Eight seed. Well, uh, I can see them sneaking in. I can, I can see, see them, them being the top I can eight. See them yeah, there's in. no motherfucking Kev, way. I mean, they they got pieces. Don't don't. A lot of people just expecting them to go down. They got pieces. The the they going they down. Lou going down. The whole ship business no, is going down. They still down. got. They still got. Larry, they still got veterans on that team, man. They Jordan Clarkson coming on. He can back up Colin Sexton. I don't know why they still got George Hill. They can get rid of him. Uh, you know they got. Don't sleep on them. Man. And we hope guy. they get rid of it. I'm just saying surprise because nobody expect them to do anything. No, if shit. they make the playoffs, it'll be a it'll be remarkable. Because one thing too, you want to talk about a junkyard dog. And it's been pretty well documented the last few weeks between Draymond Green and this guy, Tristan Thompson. Tristan, yeah, Tristan, yeah, That's another Tristan, yeah. Hey, a junkyard dog he's right there. Larry he ain't, Nance, Larry he ain't Nance. been shit since he started fucking with the Kardashians. All right. These bitches fuck up everybody's hoop career. Finals playoffs team. Who coming out the East? Who coming out the West? And who's winning it? I've got the Golden State Warriors beating the Boston Celtics in five. Mm. And I really hope I'm wrong about that. Toby Hicks. Yeah, I got the Golden State Warriors over Boston, too. Mmm. Mmm. I got my Lakers making it to the conference finals and losing to Golden State. Mmm. Well, you know what? I'm like, hey, fuck it. I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm going to go with Golden State, and they're going to beat my Philadelphia 76ers in the finals. But you know what? We're going to learn a lot, and we're going we're gonna to take that ass whipping we're going to get, and it's going to make us tougher for seasons to come, man. Yeah, because so, they, yeah, and Golden State going to keep their team so y'all can keep getting ass. No, it's Clay Thompson leaving, after, and, and, and uh, the center is leaving, too. Uh, center, DeMarcus Sacramento, Cousins, DeMarcus, DeMarcus Cousins, Cousins. He's leaving, he leaving, too. So, and uh, it, we don't know if they're going to they gonna sign, and Kevin Durant might be leaving, too. So, all right, so listen. That's the NBA storylines. We have an exciting, exciting season, man. To look forward to. To look forward to. And and just remember, this is actually not our preview show. We're going to come back probably in a couple weeks after they actually do the official, right before the season starts, do the official, where we go team by team and we're going to check it out. We just wanted to do some storylines, man, and get you guys uh, ready for an exciting NBA. So get your NBA package. I'm ordering mine. So, so get that together, man. And, uh, um, it's going to be real exciting, man, for this year, man. We're looking forward to it, man. NBA, it's that 
time of the year. NBA when NBA season and football season is going at yeah, the same baseball time. Baseball mm-hmm. playoffs. Yeah. It's the best time of the year. Baseball the playoffs, great time of year. football it's, season, uh, and basketball season. I mean, I'll tell you what, basketball, you know what? The one thing I will say, though, is LeBron at least gives the Warriors a run right there. It gives yeah. the Lakers a chance. Yeah, yeah we got a chance. We're going to be in the conference finals against them. Uh, I'll say one thing. I hope conference it's you guys. Final. I yes, hope it's against, you guys against, against Houston. Golden State. I hope it's you guys Golden against State Houston. Golden State going to have to play Houston. They're going to beat them before the conference final. Okay, I will see. I and Joey. a sleeper for the MVP, by the way, mm-hmm. Anthony Davis. Fear yeah, the brow. I can roll with that. Did we pick MVP? We picked MVPs, right? Oh, yeah, we, we, we all picked LeBron. LeBron. Oh, we all picked LeBron. Okay, but sleeper for MVP, yeah. Anthony Davis. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. All right, uh, Joey, where can they catch you at, man? Where can they find you at? What you got going on? You know what, everyone? Look, just uh, pitching a script right now. Still trying to meet with investors, uh, you know, to raise the funds. Uh, but for sure, October 17th, it's a Wednesday night, State Social House in West Hollywood. I will be performing there on my 32nd birthday. Yeah, yeah ring that bell. That's right. Wow, wow. Uh, but nah, just, uh, you know, making my rounds. Uh, I do a lot of odd jobs for social media. Was just kicking it with, or uh, from to pay my bills. Uh, was just kicking it with Ronald McDonald. And yes, yeah, that was that. the Ronald McDonald. He called me the man, said he, I'm gonna, he's going to call me Hulk Hogan now because the way I was flexing in the photos, and I can do the Hulk Hogan voice spot on now. Hey, did too. he tell you where else he'd be doing McDon- Ronald McDonald? At? Like, I mean, is oh, he the he, motherfucker that live in the boot? Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> this is the this is the guy. Oh, okay. this is the guy. I might add that dude could dance too. But nah, look, people, I you'll f- I get around. Simple mm-hmm. as that. Just follow me on social Tupac. media uh, at uh, Joe Stradamus on Instagram. That's J O E S T R A D A M U S underscore. Oh, or find me on Facebook, Joey Eberline. Eberline is spelled E B E R L E I. And that's what's up, man. Listen, uh, uh, this Saturday, September 22nd, I'm at the Comedy Palace in San Diego, man. San Diego. Come yeah. on. Stay class in San homie. Diego. I'm on the P-Man, the homie P-Man. I'm on his Raw Comedy show. So raw this, Comedy. Yeah, 22nd, man, Comedy Palace. I'll be there, man. And, you know, come check us out, man. What you got Vegas, coming up, man. Catch me uh, September 27th, Thursday night, September 27th at the Rampart Casino. Uh, Bonkers Comedy Club inside Rampart Casino. Always a great time. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, always a great time. Uh, shit, man. Great hotel room. Get to stay at the yeah. W. Yeah, oh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, that's a nice little spot that's there. A good, that's Some a good, good room, stuff man. right there. So, yeah. you know, listen, we do this for the military. You know, shout out to the whole, all the military, man. We yeah. do this for you guys, man. Uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, National Coast Guard. Guard, Coast Guard, man. We do this for you guys, man. So we thank you for your service. Uh, please listen to us. If you're listening to us on iTunes, please subscribe to us. Subscribe to us. Uh, rate us and leave a review. And if you leave a review, take a screenshot of it. Then go to our Instagram page, Dope Dealer Podcast. That's our Instagram Instagram page and DM yeah. us the screenshot and we will send you a t-shirt, man. We'll send you a free t-shirt, yeah, man. free t-shirt. Yeah, man. Can't That's how beat we do. that. You can't beat that, man. We got a number. Listen, the holidays are coming up, so please book us, you know, uh, Toby, yeah. Joey, and myself are very talented comedians, so please book us, man. Uh, we got a number for you to call. 818-916-1818. That's right, man. So call that number, man. Say it one more time. 818-916-1818. Call that number and book us, man. Br- bring us to your city. Bring the dope dealer comedy. Uh, Clean comedy. Yeah. X-rated comedy. Whatever. We cater to you. No event is too big or too small. Yes. I mean, tell your bosses. Tell them, hey, tell them you tired of the same old fucking Christmas party. Same old bullshit, looking around, buying them cheap-ass gifts. Tell them you want to laugh and have a good time while you're drinking instead of just drinking and sitting there until somebody gets so drunk that they fuck off their job. Mm -hmm. You can laugh, have a good time, and everybody keep their job. Uh, corporations. Uh, if you are the boss, make it happen. Make it happen, man. Make it happen, Captain. So listen, uh, uh, yeah, so I think we got everything done, man. Joey, always a pleasure, man. Thanks always, for having me, boys. Always a pleasure it is. Always pleasure. Uh, follow us on, dope, on our Instagram page, man. Shout out to our producer, Paul, man. We out, man. We love you guys, man. Dope Dealer Podcast. On this microphone, I know I'm a kill it. I got you burning in the skillet. Competition, I'm coming. I'll be blazing on this track and tell the world I'm running. You can't get me, no, nah. Oh, dude, I'm a star when I pull up in my car.